The process of rounding decimals sometimes gives students trouble, and it really doesn't have to. We're going to look at a few examples and talk about the process, and hopefully smooth that out for you so that you won't have any trouble going forward. If we look at the number 42.731, we've got a decimal point right here, and we've got values to the left of that decimal point, and we have values to the right of that decimal point. Those place values are, we have the tens place, we have the ones place, we have the tenths place, we have the hundredths place, and we have the thousandths place. The first thing that's important to recognize when you're doing a rounding problem is to make sure you're rounding to the proper place. So make sure you understand these place values and their locations. The first example we're going to look at is round to the nearest hundredth, and we're given the number 42.731. We're going to round to the nearest hundredth, which means our number is going to stop right here at the hundredths place. That's where our final decimal is going to be when we write our answer. What we have to decide is, is this going to be rounded down to 42.73 or rounded up to 42.74? And the way we decide is by looking one space to the right of where we need to round. If the number in this space is 5 or higher, we round up. If the number in that spot is 4 or lower, we round down. In this particular case, we've got a 1 in that spot, so we're going to round down and rounded to the nearest hundredth, we're going to have 42.73. Let's look at another example. Round to the nearest hundredth, 42.738. This one's a little different than the last one. We're still rounding to the nearest hundredth, so this is going to be the last digit in our answer. It's either going to be 42.73 or 42.74. The way we decide is look one space to the right of where we need to round. If that number is 5 or higher, we round up. If that number is 4 or lower, we round down. In this case, we have an 8. That is bigger than 5, 5 or bigger, so we're going to round up and our answer is going to be 42.74. Another thing I want you to think about when rounding is, yes, there are rules, and yes, those rules work. If, it's, if the space to the right is 5 or bigger, we round up. If the space to the right is 4 or lower, we round down, and that works. But another thing is, when you look at 42.731, is that closer to 42.73, or is it closer to 42.74? It's closer to 42.73. And then 42.738. Is that closer to 42.73? Or is that closer to 42.74? It's closer to 42.74. So it's another thing you can use to kind of make sure that you're rounding properly. Our next example is round to the nearest tenth, 1.649. First thing you have to do is find the tenths place. That's where the 6 is, so that's going to be the last digit in our answer. To decide whether we round up or down, we look one space to the right. That's a four. Four lower means we round down. So when I round this to the nearest tenth, it's going to be 1.6. One last example. A lot of the problems that we work on in this class, in the consumer math chapter especially, will deal with money. And you might see the instruction round to the nearest cent. Well, rounding to the nearest cent, there are a hundred cents in a dollar, so that's the same thing as rounding to the hundredth place. So when you see round to the nearest cent, we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. In this case, we've identified the hundredths place. We look one space to the right. That number is five or bigger, so we're going to round up. And rounding this to the nearest cent will be five dollars and eighteen cents.